Let's take a quick look at how we could use a manager, which we've just learned about, to randomly select out of a bunch of objects and take some action on them. Uh, in this case, we'll use a little bit of physics and make some pop-up objects. So I will start with a new cube game object and a new plane game object. Game object. I'll scale up the plane just so we have a lot of room. And the cube, call this pop cube. And let's move up here a little bit. I want to add component physics rigid body. And you can just leave it standard if you'd like. And I also want to make a new, make it in my materials here, a new physics material. And I'll call this bouncy. And let's set the bounciness to one. And I'll apply that to the pop cube. And that looks good. Oh, one last thing. Just so you can see it. How about blue? There we go. All right, there's our majestic bouncy cube. So let me <laughs> make sure I have it selected. Right click, add a new FSM. And I want to go ahead and call this listener because it's going to hang out and kind of do that for us. And let's add a transition and we'll use pop up as a new event. Fill that, pop up. And then we will put in a pop-up state, let's call this add pop. And a finished event here, and return us to the listener. So we're just gonna loop around again, have a nice easy little, little thing. And in the pop state is where we wanna add some upward force to this cube, okay? So I'm going to go to my action browser and choose, oddly enough, add force. What this does is add some, some force in any given direction, x, y, or z, to the rigid body object in question. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and use the owner, because the owner is the pop cube. That'll work fine. I only want to apply this in uh, the y direction, which is up. And I'm going to add 400 as the force. Let me scroll down a little bit. I want to keep this in world because this object is going to pop up and tumble around and bounce. And so it might land with its positive Y actually facing down on the ground, in which case applying force to it would only shove it into the ground and it wouldn't move at all. So that would be kind of lame. We want this to move in the Y axis in the world space, not in itself. That way it'll always move upward Y regardless of the world, regardless of its own orientation. And finally, the force, I'm going to choose impulse as the force. That will take care of popping it up. Let's actually, let's change the transition here. Oh, I'm sorry. Delete transition. Let's change the um, starting state. That is start state. And just press, press play and see what happens. So there we see our little, our cube pop up in the air. Let me back up a little bit. You can see it again. Boing and it bounces a little bit with the physic material. So, that's kind of fun. We'll go ahead and switch this back. Now, after the add force, we want to add, it, it just sits there square, so we want to add a little bit of rotation to this. So, I'm going to use iTween Rotate. Oh, let me type that right. <laughs> iTween Rotate Add. I'll add that into my scene there. And this lets us specify a vector, which I'm going to do. We could use a uh, we could use a variable here, like we've talked about a lot. In this case, and it would be good to have some random numbers in here, but in this case, I'm going to just add 180, uh, let's say 90, and why not 111? Just to give it some some motion. Uh, in each of these vectors. So that means it's X rotation, it's, it's, I guess it's X rotation is this way, it's Y rotation would be this way around the top. Let me do this. Pick the cube. 
So it's X is here, and so we're going to add 180 there. It's, or sorry, it's, it's Y is here. It's X is this. So we're going to add 180 there, uh, like 90 this way, and 111 around the other way. I accidentally deleted that. So there we go. That'll be just enough to get this thing spinning and look, look kind of good. We can leave the time at 1. Uh, but I do want a little bit of delay here so that it doesn't happen exactly as the cube is trying to come off the ground. So I'm going to delay this rotation action by 0.15 seconds. And then over the next one second, it will apply this rotation, which I think will look pretty good. We will see in a moment. And finally, speed and everything's fine. So let's just make that the start state again one more time and press play and see how it looks. There we've got a little cube that spins and bounces a bit. So let's set our start state back to the listener. And I need to tag the pop cube so that it can be filtered out later. And I'll explain that when we get to the manager. But since we're here, this would be the right place to do it. So I'm going to add a tag called pop cubes and add it. So each cube, or this cube, is going to be tagged with this tag pop cubes. And finally, I will make a prefab. Oops, not a folder. I will make a prefab. And we will call that pop cube. Get that out of the, get that out of there. Yes, and I'm going to drop my pop cube right there onto the prefab. Now, if I get rid of that, I can bring it back in and make a few of them. Duplicate that a few times. And nine of them ought to be pretty good. We'll do that. Oops. Just put them any old way around there. And that will take care of setting up our pop cubes for right now. Now we can move on to make the manager that will handle the pop-up of these different cubes. I'm going to create a new empty game object and name it Geo. Just call it pop-up manager. That'll work. And I'll put a new FSM on it. And we'll add one more state. So transition on each one. And this first one I'm going to call wait. And the next one I will call add pop, send pop. That works better, send pop. And finished state will flow back here. And a finished state, actually I don't want that. I'm gonna make a custom event. I'm gonna call this, whoops. Target events there. I'm going to add send pop as an event. I'll swap that out to send pop, move that right in there. All right, now in wait, what we want to do is have this manager hang out for a couple of seconds and not do anything and then fire off the event to tell one of these boxes to pop up and then come back and wait again. So we want to randomize the amount of time it waits a little bit and I am going to choose a random float. What this is going to give me is a random number between whatever I select. And in this case, I think a 0.3 as a minimum. Oops, 0.3. There we go, not point, point, point 0.3. <laughs> and a maximum of two will be good. And I need to store the result. I need to store the float number that this generates in, in a variable. So. I'll make a new variable. I do want it to be a float. And what I just call this time to wait. So back here, I can store my variable right there, whatever it comes up with between 0.3 and 2, right here in this variable time to wait. Then we need to do the actual wait. So there's also something called wait. And this will just not take any action until this amount of time is over. In this case, I can switch back to the variable for the time, time to wait. So whatever it generates here, we're going to use this variable to hand it right down here. And the finish event is going to be send pop. 
which means after this amount of time, when you wait and don't do anything, send this. Now, wait is significantly different than just firing off an event and letting it finish and going down through the line because this says actually pause and hold for a few seconds. So if you wanted to delay something by, say, five or six seconds and know you had the time for something else to occur in that range, this is how you would do it. So sending the pop goes to this event. So all we need right here is to send an event to one of these boxes. And we need to randomly pick the box, just like we randomly picked the float over here. We can randomly get an object to send this event to. So let's do a get random object. And I'm going to move that to the top. So get random object will look in our scene here and it'll find any random object with a, a filtered tag. And that's why we added the tag to the, to the cube a little bit earlier. So if I come in here, I can choose pop cubes and it's now gonna get a random object out of my scene, but only objects that have pop cube tag added to them. Tags give you a great way to just filter things out and uh, give you a really focused result like this. And again, we need to store the result as something. So I'm going to make another variable here. This time it needs to be game object. I'll save this as thing to pop. Going back into my state, I can choose thing to pop. We don't need to do it every frame, we just need to do it once. In fact, if you do it every frame, it'll be a terrible performance hit, so don't. Then I'm going to send an event to game object FSM. Uh, specify the one, but this time it's thing to pop because it's the random object we've found in our scene. The FSM name is FSM. And the event we're going to send is, uh, it's on our cube actually. Let's look at our pop cube again. And the event is pop up. The listener is waiting for that, if you remember. And we've made that global. So looking at this again, we can choose to send the event pop up. And that will do it. When it's done, it's going to flow back here and do another random number and wait. So let's uh, play this and see what happens. Probably going to be more interesting in this window. So there it randomly kicks a cube up, and there's another one at random. And it's just picking out of those nine, waiting that random amount of time between 0.3 and 2 seconds, and throwing them up in the air, which is kind of fun. And you can tune this. If you enter the pop cube and choose the amount of pop, um, we could do a little less force, say 330. That could be interesting. Uh, we could set the amount of rotation time to maybe like 0.6 to speed that up. Let's play again and see what happens. Now they spin a little more and they don't go quite as high. And uh, see, we changed the timing, so now they're a little goofy. They don't, they don't spin long enough in the air. It looks almost like it stops. <laughs> but you get the idea. This is something you could use to, um, to do 2D games. If you locked the camera, you could have different things turn over or highlight, you know, so that you needed to click on them or rotate them. Uh, it could be uh, a random way to select things in a 3D scene. You could have a random selection of waypoints somebody might walk to. You could have a random sound that would play. You could have random different effects that might go off. Uh, all sorts of things you could do. Anytime you have an array of things that you want to take action on randomly, but have them have their own intelligence and do something on their own, this is the sort of approach you could use.